What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video here on fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. There are double game weeks being announced, there are blank game weeks coming up. FPL at the moment is absolute chaos and I know a lot of you will be looking at your teams thinking I don't have the players I want for the upcoming doubles, I don't like the players I picked in my game week 17 restart team so we're going to be starting a bit of a new series here again it sort of cuts and changes what I do with these videos every week depending on what is hot and what is the good topic for you all and so we're going to be starting a new wildcard series starting today where every week I'll update you on what a wildcard draft would look like if I was to be playing it in that specific game week so before we get into it if you have not liked the video already if you have not subscribed to Fantasy Football Scout make sure you do and let's dive in. We're going to start in goal. Now, Danny Ward obviously takes up one of the goalkeeping spots. There's no chance I go for anyone else in my goalkeeper position there as a second option. Leicester have not looked as good defensively. They've looked like they're going back to maybe how they did at the start of the season, but the price of 4.1 million for Danny Ward just cannot be ignored. To partner him though, a lot of you might be going Kepper. Some of you might be going Nick Pope. I have gone with Edison. A double game week in game week 20 coming up, followed by a double in game week 23 as well, means that having a nailed on Manchester City triple up which we will get to in this draft particularly in defence where it's quite hard to predict who's going to start Jao Cancelo, Lewis, Stones, Laporte, Ake, Carl Walker I've decided to go with Edison. Now at 5.4 million, he's actually in and around the same price a lot of those other Manchester City defenders and of course cheaper than Jao Cancelo who looks like to be a big rotation risk. I've got Cancelo in my team and I'm looking to sell him this week. Again, if you're interested in what I'm doing in my team, I talk about all that over on my channel as well. So we've gone with Edison in there at 5.4. And again, you might go for Pope, but when we move into defence now, I've gone with double Newcastle defence in here. So we've got both Botman and of course Trippier stays. Trippier, we don't need to discuss that much. If you don't have Trippier in your drafts and you are looking to bring him in, he still needs to be in there. Even with them not having a double game week, I still think Trippier is an essential player. Yes, he does fall into that essential bracket. Even at 6 million, I would still be going there, but I have paired him with Botman. That Newcastle defence looks so assured. Eddie Howe is building that team to defend first and attack second. So this is good because it means there's a lot of bonus points to go around the defence. If you are looking at having Almoron in there as well, great. But I think double defence is much better than double attack and there is so much value. Botman is still at 4.4 million at time of recording. He might go up to 4.5, but even at that price, he seems like a fantastic option to partner alongside Kieran Trippier. Everyone already has at least one Newcastle defender. So if you don't go for the double up, you're basically losing out if they ever keep a clean sheet. Now, originally, I already had Pope and they had John Stones in here, but Edison and Botman, for pretty much the same potential return in terms of points, saved me a reasonable amount of money, which is why I ended up with Edison in here. Now, elsewhere in the defense, we've gone with Ben White. This draft does leave a little bit of value in it when I try to make it. Now, it depends on your squad value. You might want to change that up a little bit, but I've gone with Ben White. You could go for the likes of Gabriel or Saliba if you can afford it. Fantastic, great, go for it. But Ben White, playing at right back, yes, he had that one 59th minute sub, which was pretty infuriating infuriating but with the amount of goals they conceded once he went off I don't think he'll necessarily get an early sub like that over the next few weeks Arsenal of course have the double in game week 23 there's a small chance that they double in game week 21 you might have seen the potential predictions from the likes of Ben Krellin over on Twitter as well but Ben White, no matter what they have in terms of doubles, Arsenal defend very well. They have a nice run of fixtures coming up starting in about game week 22 as well. So he needs to be in there. Luke Shaw, of course, Manchester United have a double in game week 20. They also potentially have one in game week 22. Of course, that has not been confirmed. Potential rumours of that. But even if that's not the case, Luke Shaw looks like a great asset of 5.1. You could go down to Diego Dalu, but Juan Pesaka has been playing well. So I do think if you have the money, Luke Shaw is really where you should be going in terms of the Manchester United. United defense he looks like he can start he's a great price and their fixtures going forward are very nice plus of course the bonus of the double this week and the cheap option we've gone with is Bueno of Wolves he seems to be playing 60 75 minutes every game so if they concede late he tends to be taken off sort of before that goal as some of you might have got lucky with that in the past few game weeks as well 3.9 million is the cheapest starting defender if you want to invest potentially and go to an Aston Villa defender then fine but this guy's likely to sit last on your bench Game week 25, blank game week. He looks like he'll be fine to play in that as well. So I think he's the best cheap option. I wouldn't worry about investing too much extra money in upgrading him. Now, moving into midfield. So we've gone with an Arsenal double up and it doesn't include Saka. We've gone with the budget two in Martinelli and in Odegaard as well. I just think the value that these two have in their positions and in their price is just crazy good. Saka is great. Saka's on penalties, but 6.8 million and a 6.7 million 
a piece. What it allows you to do with the rest of the draft, I think it is great. If you have the money in the bank once you made this, if you have a strong team value, then maybe you want to upgrade one of these, probably Martinelli to go all the way up to Saka, then fine. But I just think at their price, you may as well go for the two of them and invest the money elsewhere. Again, no double on the horizon until game week 23, of course, where they have Manchester City and Brentford in there. But again, from game week 22 onwards, like Ben White, their fixtures are really nice. I think a triple up on Arsenal will be very popular once that does roll around. Then we have Kevin De Bruyne. Now, Kevin De Bruyne has not looked back to his usual self since the return of the Premier League, since he dropped in form over the World Cup. However, a doubling game with 20 and a doubling game with 23, plus Wolves in the middle of those two, you basically need to be picking the most nailed Manchester City players that you can, which is why I've got Edison in here. Of course, we're going to have a Haaland up front. And the triple, we have gone with Kevin De Bruyne. If you wanted to go and squeeze Salah in, you could, and you could look at going for the likes of Riyad Mahrez, for example, or Jack Grealish. We know we're going to get burnt in one of these Manchester City assets. One of them might do great. Foden, Grealish, Alvarez, Mares. One of them could do great. Gundogan, Bernardo Silva. But the chances of us getting burned, you have to admit, is going to be quite high with the amount of pep roulette we've seen, the amount of times he's changed his mind about which player he wants to play. De Bruyne is nailed. De Bruyne is likely to play all four games across the two double game weeks, plus the games in between as well. If you want to take a gamble, go for it. But it's not what I'm advising at the moment. Then the final couple we've got in here, Rashford again with a doubling game with 20. He looks on such good form. Manchester United are scoring goals and so much of it is going through him. He has scored double the amount of goals in the Premier League to any other Manchester United player. So at 7 million, I still think he's a bargain. He also took a penalty in the FA Cup game. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to take penalties because Martial wasn't on the pitch, but he did take it over Bruno Fernandes. So he could end up being on penalties going forward for Manchester United as well. And then finally in midfield, we've gone with Matoma. You could have gone Andreas Pereira you could go Leon Bailey but the Brighton runner fixtures coming up is really nice Matoma looks like such a focal point of that attack seems like such a clever player as well really impressed having watched him play and I think Brighton will score and I think he'll be more consistent in returns over Andres Pereira and Leon Bailey as well if you're needing to cut down money then maybe you can downgrade him and that's a way to do it but I do think what he can offer over the next few weeks is very good I'm very very impressed with what Brighton are doing at the moment and then up front we have three double grain week forwards we have have Haaland, of course, don't really need to talk that much about Haaland. Haaland's in there. He's likely to be captained. You might also consider triple captaining him in game week 20. I don't think I'll be doing it, but I think a lot of you might be considering it. Then we've gone with Harry Kane. Now, Harry Kane's performed so far this season in a Spurs team who have been below par and not performing as well as they should. And imagine what they, he can do if they do start to click, if the likes of Son start to perform again, if the likes of Perisic, Doherty start to click again. Kane's only going to see an increase in the amount of points. He's actually not that far behind Erling Haaland in terms of points scored. So ditching Cancelo actually allows you to go for a three-mium draft, which we've got in here in De Bruyne, Haaland and Harry Kane as well. So three-mium is possible when you have a cheaper defence like we've got. So I do think it's worthwhile going for Harry Kane. Of course, he is on four yellow cards, just like Mitrovic was going into his double. If Kane picks up a yellow card in his first game with the double, he will be suspended for the second match. But I think Harry Kane's a clever player. He knows what Tottenham need him for and he just is not going to go and get suspended, in my opinion. I might live to regret it. I think I'm going to be taking a minus four to buy him. So you can all blame me if it does go horribly wrong. But I would be having Harry Kane in on wild card. And then the final one we've got is to triple up on that Manchester United team. And that is Anthony Martial. I did consider going double in defence and going with De Gea in goal and moving Edison into defence, for example, and not having Martial and going for Ivan Tony potentially has three really nice fixtures on the bounce, which I would consider. You could also go with Callum Wilson. The fixtures there are really nice, but I decided to go with Martial until they signed Vegkors, who I still don't think is going to be number one. I think Martial will be leading the line in their double. And I think the double is better from an attacking point of view than I do think it is from a defensive point of view. I don't plan on holding him for that long. Again, if you've got money in the bank, you could potentially look to move him. But I think he's fine for the double as our third Manchester United player. You might think this is too short focus and just want to go, no, you know what? I'm not going to have Martial. I might go with someone else. Of course, there is a small chance they get a doubling game with 22 against Leeds as well, in which case you would want Anthony Martial as a third Manchester United option. In terms of what formation I play, it's probably a 3-4 three this week and a three four three most weeks to be honest Martial could rotate with Matoma depending on whether you think Martial's going to start the amount of minutes he's played but generally this would be a 3-4-3 let me know what you think if you're on wildcard this week or even just your general thoughts about what your wildcard draft would look like if you were going to play it anyone that you would own that I don't have who would be your third Manchester City asset is it De Bruyne 
Is it someone else? Drop it all in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to Fancy Football Scout if you haven't already. If you like FPL videos, there's plenty more on the Scout channel. Plus, there's plenty more on my channel as well. FPL Harry, just search it in. Links in the description. There should be a link above now as well. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in the remainder of Game Week 19. Good luck in Game Week 20 when it comes around. And I'll be back again next week. Thank you.